Antarctica heading for the South Pole. Oh, I'm in Antarctica heading for the South Pole. But I tell you what, all I can see is snow and ice everywhere. What happened then? Oh, the snow and ice I was walking on gave way and I came crashing through. I'd be trapped if it weren't for that door over there. I'm not really in the Antarctic. I'm in the Antarctic Centre in Christchurch. But it does get you thinking. How do they travel over snow and ice? Hmm? In an aeroplane? By skiing over the snow. You um, have a parachute and you've got a um, board and you're travelling on the ice. On skis, sled and with dogs. They travel by boat. Sometimes they use these special little sort of like buses sort of thing. They wear skis and um, use sledges. Hmm, interesting answers and a very good question if you happen to be down Antarctica way. Because it's almost completely covered with snow and ice and you don't really want to go falling through the ice if you can help it. You know, maybe it's got something to do with weight. If I lost weight, maybe then I wouldn't fall through the snow and ice. Oh, but it's got to be something more than weight. I mean, things that are much bigger and much heavier than I am can go across the ice and snow, no problems, they don't fall through. Like huge galaxy cargo planes, they are enormous and they can travel over the ice and snow, no troubles. I think we need to investigate further. No, I'm not making a snow person. In Antarctica, it is so dry that you can't press the snow together the same way you can in New Zealand. But watch this. If I push my finger into the snow, it can go in quite a long way. But watch what happens when I press my whole hand into the snow. It doesn't go in anywhere near as much. And that's because of pressure. I'm using the same amount of force with my finger as I am with my whole hand, but the pressure is concentrated into the tip of my finger. That whole weight is going in very easily. But when I use my whole hand, that pressure is spread out over the whole surface of the hand. So the snow doesn't move as easily. OK, time for a quick quiz. Why wouldn't this normal old car be any good for driving over snow and ice? Fingers on the buzzers and go. Yes? The heater doesn't work on this car. Ah, uh, well, that's no good at the South Pole. <sighs> but that's not the answer I was looking for. Pardon? Ah, the tyres. That skid on the ice? Well, yes, that's true, but uh, no, that's not the answer I was looking for. Come on, time's running out. Yes? Something to do with the wheels. Well, yes, it is something to do with the wheels. But it's how much the wheels touch the ground at any one time. I'll show you. Okay, let's take her away. <laughs> well, now, this is interesting. At any one time, the weight of the entire car rests on these four tiny places. One, two, three, Four. All the weight of the car on these four tiny places. Think of the pressure. And what if this wasn't the car park, but it was snow and ice? All that pressure, the whole weight of the car on those four tiny areas, the ice could crack and a wheel disappear into a hole. 
Or how about the whole car disappearing under the ice? And what if there was water underneath the ice, like there is at the South Pole? Not a good look. Now, if you wanted to head down to the shops in Antarctica, you don't really want to be taking the family car. What you need is one of these, a snowmobile. Hey, it's a bit like a motorbike, but check out these here. These are called tracks. And look how much of the ground they cover. All along the side, at the front, and all along the other side too. So what that means is, the weight of the snowmobile is spread out over quite a big area. And that means there's not much pressure on the snow and ice. And that means the snowmobile should stay on top of the snow and ice and not go under it. Okay, let's go to the shops. What? No shops? One shop? Oh. Mind you, I suppose if I really wanted a nice block, there's plenty of them around me. OK, stand by for action. We're going to find out just how one of those tracked vehicles works. And I'm not talking an old snowmobile. No way. I'm talking about one of these. A Hagland all-terrain vehicle. One of these babies can go anywhere. And it's all because of these tracks here. OK, I'm going to crank her up and put her through her paces. OK, I'll put these on so I can tell you all about the Hagland, cos I'm in the driver's seat. And with that in mind, it might pay to stand back. Thank you. Here goes. <laughs> the tracks don't slide along the ground like a sled would. Instead, they... Well, they come down from the front, see? Like that. And they, and they sit on the ground like... Well, like tracks. Oh, and look, the wheels roll along the tracks nice and smooth. And then see, the tracks get picked up at the back, and away they go down to the front of them, do the whole thing again. Woohoo! And the key to how the haggling can travel across the snow and ice is just how many wheels there are and how big those tracks are. Woohoo! <laughs> And the weight of the Hagland and all the people on board gets spread out over all that area that the tracks touch the ground. Well, that means the pressure on the ground is very light. Whoa! Much less than a car wheel. In fact, it's only half the pressure of a single human footprint. Woohoo! It may look like a beast, but it's really very gentle. Whoa! Whoa! And it's got a couple of tricks up its sleeve, too. No matter how softly you tread on snow and ice, sometimes you come across a crevasse. A big crack where the ice and snow has fallen away. No worries for the haggling, though. Woo, it just keeps on going. And if worse comes to worse, and the haggling does fall through the ice into the water, well, that's OK, because I'm driving, and it can float as well. Full speed ahead, Captain. So, that's how they travel over snow and ice in Antarctica. Because the tricky thing with snow and ice is that it can give way under your weight and the weight of your vehicle. So, the trick is to reduce the pressure on the snow and ice over a bigger area. And one way of doing that is using a vehicle with... tracks. Hey, you can investigate pressure next time you're walking barefoot at the beach. What's the best way to get across the sand? On tippy toes or on the flat soles of your feet? Maybe you've got some questions that you'd like answered. You can write to us at Susie's World, P.O. Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland. Or head to the website www.susie.co.nz. Meanwhile, I'm going home for the day. I know a couple of shortcuts. I should be there in no time. See you later. Kaki there. So the trick is to reduce the pressure on the snow and ice by using a bigger area. And I'll do that a bit better, shall I? Yeah. 
This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.